is the day that the Lord has made. And let's, let us all rejoice and be glad in this day. Amen. It wasn't the day that was promised, but God's mercy, his mercy this morning was brand new and has afforded us another opportunity to come into the household of faith one more time. And we thank God for that reason and that reason alone. Amen. He has been good. We're going to ask those that, uh, yeah, the best of you would come on in and uh, let's, uh, let's prepare our hearts and our minds for worship on this morning. This is a good day to worship the Lord. Yeah, it's a good day. Amen. Amen. I'm, uh, I'm not going to be long this morning. I, I'm looking forward to our praise and worship session on this morning. Yeah, yeah, the praise leader, he's in place. The VOT is in place. The band is in place. We all ready to worship God on this morning. Amen. Amen. Saints, I have, uh, I want to read a portion of scripture this morning. It, 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 it might be a little unorthodox, but, uh, but I want to read it, and it was encouraging to me, and I'm hoping that it will be encouraging to you. It's just a reminder, uh, I think, that, that most of us already know, but there may be a chance that somebody might not know. So we're just going to read a few verses from uh, the, the book of Romans, the 10th chapter of Romans. And it says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they bring ignorance of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from heaven, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. And if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confesses it. confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I, I, I don't know about y'all, saints, but that's enough to praise God for right there. When I, when I read that, you know, somebody, I, I, I just, somebody ought to be hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna, right this morning, because we have, a, we have a right to praise God simply because of what he's done for us. Yeah, he says that the word says, if you just confess with your mouth, and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, he says, you shall be saved. Now, that's God doing something for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. We ought to praise God this morning and just say, thank you for doing what you did. He's been a mighty good God. He's been a mighty good God. Let's go to the God, uh, to the throne of grace. 
I will tell the Father, Father, we come this morning. We say thank you, Father. We thank you for being our God. You realize, my Heavenly Father, that you've done for us what we could not do for ourselves. So we say hallelujah to your name. We praise you this morning, my Heavenly Father. We pray that you would accept these praises. We pray, my Heavenly Father, that you will smile down upon these praises that goes up this morning. We've been taught that when praises go up, blessings come down. So, Father, we just bless your name on today. We pray, my Heavenly Father, for those that are less fortunate and those that weren't able to rise this morning, those that weren't able to come into the household of faith. We pray this morning, have mercy on them. Then, my Heavenly Father, those that are ill and, and unable to move this morning, we pray for mercy this morning, my Heavenly Father. Father, we come this morning asking, please forgive us of our sins. Father, we realize that it's you that we've sinned against and you only. So, Father, we come to you asking that you forgive us and cleanse us from the unrighteousness in our lives, my Heavenly Father. Rejoice the, that salvation in us. Rejoice, rejoice. I mean, Father God, we ask that you would restore the joy of our salvation on today. Father, we ask just bless in Jesus' name. We ask that you would bless this service on this morning, my Heavenly Father. Pray that every soul that comes into this door, my Heavenly Father, we pray blessings upon their head. We ask, my Heavenly Father, if there be one that don't know you in the pardon of their sin, on the one that don't know that if they confess with their mouth and believe in their hearts, if there be one that comes through that door, Father, we pray that you would prick the hearts of those, my Heavenly Father, prick their hearts where they too will come out of the darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus the Christ. Father, we need you today. We need you each and every day of our lives. We ask that you would bless the man of God on this morning. Bless the preached word, Father. Let the word go out that these your people might be edified on today. You said in your word, my heavenly Father, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Father, we ask that he would speak a word on this morning, speak a word that will make a difference in all of our lives. Father, we just pray that you would continue to hold and keep our pastor in a special way. We ask, my Heavenly Father, that you would keep uh, away all the hurt, the harm, and the danger. Bless him and his family, my Heavenly Father. Continue to keep a hedge around him. Father, we ask that you would just bless today in Jesus' name. And for that, we will be eternally grateful. We'll be so grateful. And we'll be so quick to give your name all of the praise and all of the glory. It's in Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Saints of God, let's praise God on this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. For what he did on Calvary, we don't need nobody to prop us up. We thank God for this man on this morning. But for what he did, somebody ought to be able to stand on your feet and say hallelujah to his name. That's it, that's it. Come on, give him some praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, out of your mouth. Come on, give him some praise. Whatever that praise may be to our Heavenly Father, who watched over us all night long. Somebody just wave your hands across the atmosphere and tell him thank you for life, health, and strength. In spite of how you feel, in spite of what you're going through, come on and give him some praise. Hallelujah. Pull on him today. Pull on him today. Be a miracle, signs and wonders, a place of restoration. Anybody? <clears throat> this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, if you're able to stand to your feet, come on, stand to your feet and put those hands together. The song just says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice. Come on. Come on, everybody, put those hands together. This is the Let us read.
I can't fucking prime you, cause I don't know what he's done for you. I only know what he's done for me. When I put this left leg out the bed this morning, then I turned around and slid that right one on out too. And it hit that floor, all I could do was tell him thank you. Uplift it. You know, I try to tell myself to take it easy, but when I get, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, I just get excited, and it's just like Jeremiah's fire shut up in my bones, and I have to give it my all every time and every opportunity that I have, because I just don't know when my last time may be, hallelujah, hallelujah, but anybody in the room need the Lord to do some things for you, come on, if you need him to do some things for you, just jump up on your feet right where you are. Thank you, Hallelujah. Praise and worship is corporate. We're doing this thing together. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're not leaving nobody behind. If you want to go into that next dimension where the Lord is and that next place to him, I dare you just to lift your hands right where you are. Get those things on your mind that you need him to do for you. Hallelujah. And begin just to lift the worship in this place. Tell God even in the situation that I'm in, God just still awesome. God just still wonderful. God, you're still gracious, you're still kind, because my situation could be worse off than what it is, but because of just of who you are, you still, yeah. you give me strength, he says in his word that my strength is made perfect in weakness, even in your weak times, he still give you strength, anybody just grateful for it, come on and just lift your hands, Lord, we're just saying, Lord, do it for me. Can we just talk to him this morning? Can you make that one-on-one -on -one relationship connection with him? And I dare you, if you don't have that relationship as pastor preached today by the time of the service, you need that relationship with the Lord. Somebody is here saying, Lord, do it for me. it may be. Lord, if you don't do it, it just won't be done. Oh, Lord, do it for me. Get that thing on your mind. I know what mine is, and I'm going to tell you, say, Lord, say it this morning. Oh! 
just tap somebody on the left or the right and say he'll never leave you, never forsake you. This is our last short number. Just say, put your trust in Jesus. He'll never fail you.
Can the church say amen? Come on, can the church say amen one more time? Can you put your hands together, give the Lord a hand clap of praise? How many of y'all know that God never fails? Come on, help me testify. How many of y'all know that God never fails? Come on, can we thank God for our choir this morning? Let's thank God for them. Let's thank God for the gifts and the abilities that we have at our church. What a blessing to be in the house of prayer. Nothing like the sounds of worship. I said nothing like the sounds of worship. And I believe that we ought to always make a joyful noise to the Lord because he is worthy of our best praise today. Amen. Thank you, choir, for blessing us again this morning. Thank you for blessing us. Why don't you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's good to see you this morning. It's good to see you. Come on, look at him one more time. Say, it's good to see you at church this morning. Somebody wanted to come to church and couldn't make it. You ought to clap both of your hands and just tell the Lord, thank you for allowing me to make it this week. I may have caught hell on Monday. May have had hell on Tuesday. I may have gone through something on Wednesday. May have gone through something on Thursday. Friday, Saturday, but here comes Sunday. Come on, get your hands up and say, here comes Sunday. I can worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Sunday morning. Something about Sunday morning. What a blessing it is to be in this house. Do we have any visitors in the house? Any first time guests? Any visitors in the house? Let me, why don't you stand on them and acknowledge you? Any first time guests, visitors at our church? There's some. I thought I saw more than one. St. Matthew, could you just be friendly enough to shake their hands and tell them? It's good to have them in church. They didn't have to come to this place. Come on, be friendly enough to say, it's good to have you. It's good to see you. It's good to be in the house of worship. I pray that something is said and done that's going to bless you. And uh, hopefully God will move you to, to, to unite with us if it's, if it's the Lord's will. Listen, I want to thank God for Pastor Daryl Labot for the message preached last week. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for all that you uh, uh, offer to the kingdom of God. And I really mean that, and I appreciate you preaching. Uh, I owe God, and uh, certainly that is the truth. What shall I render to the Lord of all of his benefits towards me? I owe God. Certainly, I do. I owe God so much, I can't stop. And so we're grateful for the preached word. We're thankful for the members for your time here today. Uh, I'm grateful to see people in church. 
in this climate that we live in, not many people are attending church. So I applaud you this morning for, for standing still and for still committing yourself to the household of faith. Something happens when you come to church. There's no other place you can experience what you're experiencing today. I need some believers in how something happens when you come to church. And so I'm grateful that the Lord has blessed us this morning uh, with his presence already. Uh, we're grateful for God's goodness. I want to continue to remind you, we've committed to prayer uh, about our Tuesday worship. We've committed to the prayer. We're not going to beg anybody. We're not going to plead, moan, and groan. We're going to believe God that God will grant the victory on Tuesday nights. We want Tuesday night worships to turn into a Sunday morning. And what I'm asking for the members, and this is not, a, this is not an unreasonable request, is that every member will commit to Bible study, will commit to the Word of God. I know you're busy. I know you got a lot to do, but faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You will not grow as a Christian until you have feed yourself with the Word of God. I'll say it again. You will not grow until you commit to the reading of God's Word. Uh, and let me say this to you. If you don't have an interest for it now, keep living. You might need the Word later on. It, you may not need it today, but I need y'all to look at the neighbor and say, keep living. You're going to need it at some point in your life. And the word is the only thing that's going to be able to give you earthly comfort uh, in this world that we live in today. And so I want to encourage you to uh, join us on Tuesday. We start promptly at 7 o'clock. We don't, we don't delay. We don't start at 7.01, 7 o'clock. Amen. Then on Wednesday, we pray every Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Um, it is my, it is, and I'm going to preach something in a minute. It is my true belief that nothing happens until after prayer. Nothing happens until after prayer. If you're going to pray, don't worry. But if you're going to worry, don't pray. But something happens after you pray. I'm, I ain't even going to shout. I'm just waiting until y'all shout back at me. I said, something happens. You see, you see, when I just made that statement, I know five people should have said something back to me and said, I know that something happens after prayer. Well, let me see if I get two and a half people to shout. I know that something happens after prayer. Some of your body's been touched. Your marriage has been put back together. God has touched your child. Y'all still sitting there. God has blessed you over and over again. You got here safely from wherever you were. You got a home to live in. I said God's been good to you. I'm just trying to see if I can get somebody to help me. God's been good to me. I said God's been good to me. Pastor, but I owe God. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. So, you know what I dream of? They was playing a little good old Jubilee dancing music. I started to stop the music and say, you know, usually when they're playing that good Jubilee music, folk clap their hands. And you stand up in accordance to what you hear. And I was just saying to myself, we haven't got church etiquette yet. We haven't got church worship down yet. You join in with the praise worshipers. You don't sit there and look at them praise because your next blessing could be dependent on your praise. While you sitting there trying to figure it out, God is saying, go praise your way out of this thing. That's your next blessing. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> let me hurry up and get out of the way. Hold on one minute, hold on, let me go and get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. 
I I got a I got a uh, I got a yeah that's it I mean I mean I mean it's contagious if you like it you join in with the praise of worshipers and that used to be a time we didn't have no music but you had to stomp your feet and you can still worship God old fashioned church old time church you just clap your hands and gave him praise and worship because that's how it should be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm grateful. got everybody yet until I get everybody we just gonna stop right now we just gonna stop until I get everybody else and we're gonna try this one more time before we get out of the church see if we can get everybody to practice worship and praise yeah it's all right I'm gonna I'm quit I'm gonna quit y'all I'm gonna quit I'm gonna quit listen listen we're praying on Wednesdays and we pray on Saturdays amen and so we're looking forward to God. That's one more thing I want to share with you. Just let me just share this. Let me share this with you. Two more things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, two more things. I think I done started something. <laughs> yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I said, ain't nothing wrong with it. Yes, sir. All right, say God bless y'all. <laughs> my, my, my. Thank y'all so much. I love church. I love, I love praise and worship. Love it with all my heart. And so I'm grateful to God. Listen, this evening at 2.30, I got to get out the way. 2.30, we've got an engagement. This is what I'm going to say to all of us. Uh, my prayer, and you know that this is, my, my, this is what I desire of you, that all the members show up at 2.30. And I'm going to continue to believe God, even though I know everybody's not going to show up. But you know that I desire to have your presence. And so I'm praying that you will start considering to support me as I go out and minister to different places. I don't ask much of you, but I'm asking you today to uh, join me. And then I'm asking this great choir, Voices of Triumph, to come and sing uh, uh, at that fellowship at 2.30. It's early enough that we can get in, have worship and then you can leave and have a great dinner or a great evening amen so i'm praying that you would do that one last thing and i'm going to the sermon uh we have an evangelism seminar at the end of this month what is that date the 27th we have a uh an evangelism seminar you've been hearing me say that we want to capture the neighborhood uh because the lord has put in new development not just the new development but to capture the neighborhood of all of the people in the church. We don't want to be a city that's hidden. We want to be a city set up on a hill. The only way that can happen is that we've got to go out and witness and share our faith and let people know that we are an operational church. And that might be somebody sitting next to you who's looking for a church. Your countenance, your attitude could be the determining factor of a person joining this church. This evangelism seminar is going to be very important to the life of the church. After we have the seminar, we're going to have an evangelism team and we're going to go out month to month. Uh, I, that's one thing I don't want the Lord to do is to charge me for not doing what he told, commanded me to do. Y'all do know evangelism is not a request. It's a command. And uh, my prayer for all of the super religious people to get into this mind and understand that we are to witness in the community that God has us in. 
lastly, this church is approaching. This is a historical church. Everybody shout historical church. We are 95 years old. We are 95. I'm, uh, come on. A black church that's still in existence, 95 years old. Now, when you become 100, you become what they say is a historical church, which means that our church has made history in this city. This church is still making history now as one of the foundations of the community. That's what this church is. I want us to don't, don't, don't dummy down what this church has meant to the community. Lift this church up. Lift it up because you're a part of history. Whatever you do, don't frown on the history that you're making. And so my prayer is that you would consider the fact that this church is 95, almost 100. This church has gone through slavery, has seen slavery, has seen uh, a black systemic racism. They've seen all kinds of stuff. Some of the people who started this church had to sit in the color session. But here we are now. And all of your modernism and you don't forget the history and some folk have died but to get us to this place I, I just want you to consider and thank God for the history of this church and this church is still making history amen that belongs there I want you to look at a Bible verse that I want to bless you with today I know this is for somebody I don't know, and I feel, I hope it's for everybody. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 14 through 17. Second Chronicles, my focus would be 15 and 17. Let me read this for contextual purposes. The Bible says, if you have a Second Chronicles in the Old Testament, you can't find it in the page. Look at the table of contents. Nothing wrong with it. And if you got a good computer, just pull it up and say 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, 14 through 17. The Spirit of the Lord came upon the men standing there. His name was Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaniah, son of Jael and son of Mataniah, a Levite who was a descendant of Asaph. He said, listen, all you people of St. Matthew and Jerusalem, listen, Leroy Lacey, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty armor, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that, out, that opens into the wilderness of Jeriel. But you will not even need to fight. Take your positions. Then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you. Somebody shout, he's with me. O oh, people of Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. I want to talk about winning life's battles while sitting them out. Winning life's battles while sitting them out. Winning life's battles while sitting them out. As I preach this sermon, I... I, I immediately, um, I immediately gravitated to the words because I admit today that I am a man who knows about battles in life. All my life, I've had to battle for something, battle for survival at some point in my life. I'm just saying that I am a man who was acquainted with battles. This is the part of life because when you look at it, saints, all of us have had our share of mental battles, emotional battles, 
physical battles. And I'm only here because God got me out of some things that could have overtaken me. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but one thing that I've just, one of the things that the Lord has shown me is that you can never take for granted the position that people are in. And I realize that you're like me, you've had your share of battles. Somebody in this room today, you just got to notice about a sickness in your life. That's a battle. Because in that sickness, you don't know if healing is going to take place. You don't know if the doctors are going to be able to uh, attend to you in the right way. You got a battle. Can I say this to you? When you're sick, that's a battle. When, when you're sick and, and, and it seems that you can't get well, that's a battle. When you got to contend and battle for your family, no matter who it is, what it is, the devil attacks families. Can I get a witness in this room? And some of us have had to fight for your family, fight for your children, fight for your spouse and all of those things. And when you're having family troubles or love troubles, that's a battle. When you look at the brothers and sisters, I passed the church and I can truthfully say that these 32 years have not been all glorious, but they've been good years because the Lord has kept me. But I've had to fight for my church. I've had to contend for my church. I've had to contend for what this church means to me as a pastor of the church. I've had to contend because I realized that this church belongs to God. When you look at it, brothers and my sisters, I want to tell you that when I thought about this lesson, I wanted to tell you that, that, that if, if you're really going to have victory in this life, you got to learn how to turn these things over to God. You got to realize today, my brothers and sisters, that the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. And let me hurry and tell you this, until we learn how to fight the battles the way God wants us to fight them, we will always be defeated. Let me tell you what I know about us. We've learned, we, we've been taught how to fight, but it's all been carnal. We, we, we've, been, we've been taught to tell folk off who get on our nerves. We've been taught to get the last lick when a lick is passed. We've been taught, my brothers and sisters, how to fight battles in a carnal way. And some of y'all haven't said amen yet, but you know I'm right about it. That, that until you learn how to fight the Lord's way, you're not going to win a battle. I want to tell you, no sense of you coming to the church with all these attitudes and all of these hang-ups and all of, these, all of this mocking and posturing until you learn how to fight the fight that God wants you to fight, you will never have real victory. Your silent treatment to somebody or thing is not going to win your battle. I wish I had somebody. You avoiding somebody is not going to win your battle. I'm preaching this all by myself. You having an attitude so that everybody can see it is not going to win your battle. Your posting on Facebook, all your frustrations, all your frustrations is not going to win your battle. But until you learn how to fight God's way. You will never gain the victory that God has for you. I'm fighting but for my peace this morning. I'm fighting for my joy this morning. I'm fighting because I understand that whatever God says I can have, I can have it. But I've got to put an application in my life to understand that it's either God's way or no way at all. But I'd rather fight the kind of fight that God wants me to fight so that I can be successful in Christian living. I want y'all to know, saints, I want to be, I want to do what I preach. Whatever we amen to, I want to apply it to my life. 
I don't want to continue to posture in church and not have real victory. I need you to look at the neighbor and say, there ain't no future in your front. You've got to be real with this thing and understand until we learn how to fight the, the fight that God wants us to fight, we will not have a victory. There's somebody struggling this morning and you've already taken matters in your own hand. And whenever you take matters in your own hand, that's when you start seeing the bottom falling out. Because whenever we lean to our own understanding, we don't give the Lord a chance to work things out for us. And some of us have said the Lord will make a way out of no way, but you are in the way of the Lord doing what he can do. Because what I discovered, God never needed us to win a battle. God doesn't need me. He doesn't need my mouth. I wish I had. He doesn't need my hands. He doesn't need my feet. Whatever we are going through, God only needs our faith in him. When you look at it, saints, these weapons that are ours, let me say this to all of us. And I just want to I want to be clear when I preach this. I, 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 I just want to be clear and tell you that saints that the Lord has a way of, of, of giving us the victory. But we have to abide by his way. Second yes. Corinthians 10, uh, three through six. And I'm going to preach this next week, but I want to give you just a little brief of what I'm going to talk about. Notice what it says. I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. And I love the Bible, by the way. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. I said that again. I said we are human. Everybody in this room, we are human. We, we have human tendencies, but we don't fight from a humanistic standpoint. What you do, God? He says, we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning to destroy false arguments. Oh, I wish I had time. Somebody here, you know about strongholds. I don't know if you can testify this morning. I know something about strongholds. That stronghold is something that keeps on captivating you, that keeps on coming back in your life. That stronghold is something that you don't see, that you can't seem to overcome. That's a stronghold in your life. And I dare say, let me preach this, that many of us in church, we have strongholds. And strongholds in our lives will keep us from praising God. And I know you may not want to testify about it. You've got something that's oppressing you. Some, some, at some point, you can win that battle, but you've got to do it God's way. Here it is. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And after you've become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. But then there's another word, Ephesians 6, 12, 13 through uh, uh, 12 through 13. Ephesians 6, 12 through 13 for, thir 13. for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness and high places and it says if you're going to win put on the whole arm of God oh my brothers and sisters when you have dressed you can't win the spiritual battles and I want to tell you saints you need every piece of armor if you're going to win this battle, these battles in life, I need somebody to shout. You need every piece of the arm. You need all of it because, my brothers and sisters, this world that we live in offers us many challenges. You need the whole arm of God. In this particular text, it's so exciting and such a blessing. This story is about Jehoshaphat, the king. Brother Bible says that Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat gets news, and this is how it happens. Trouble can show up at any time. You don't have to be looking for it. It shows up. Bad news can come at any time. Jehoshaphat got bad news, and the word was this. The Moabites, the Ammonites, and the, and the Midianites, they're all ganging up to attack you. 
that looked like trouble. And the Bible said that when Jehoshaphat heard the news, he was terrified. Everybody shout terrified. See how y'all acted? I said, I said, ter everybody shout terrified. Have you ever been scared when you heard something? Have you ever been challenged when you heard something that, 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 that was overwhelming to you when you first heard it? And whenever bad news comes, we're not always ready for it. The word of God says he got that bad news and he was terrified. This is what I love about the word, the word of God. I love the human tendencies of the word of God. The word of God does not try to, uh, 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 not try to give us a picture that people are super Christian. And that they don't struggle at times. And that they don't have hard days and hard nights and hard mornings. The Bible lets us know that it's all right to have a temporary moment where you are afraid. Where God says, where the God says, he heard the news. He was afraid, but this is what I love about him. He turns to God. Oh, can I tell y'all, saints, it, until you pray about it, it won't leave. You got to turn to God. I, I like what he did. He does not moan and groan. He's not complaining, but he begins to tell God how big he is. I wish I had tell God, you are mighty God. You've taken care of us uh, uh, before. We're asking you one more time to take care. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. But our eyes are on you. Oh, my God. Let me tell you why I love that particular word. Because I don't always know what to do. You don't always know what to do. And when you don't know what to do, keep your eyes on Jesus. And I don't know where you are in this church this morning, but I want you to know you may not know what to do, but if you can just trust God, he will see you through. I don't always know, which means that sometimes in life there are uncertainties. But then this is another thing that was interesting. He says, Lord, you see the Ammonites the Minyanites and the, the uh, uh, Ammonites and the, and, and, and the uh, uh, Moabites and the Minyanites. He said, too many ice for me to talk about. And so what he says, when you see these men, he said, we gave mercy to them. And they have not extended the same mercy to us. I want to drop this nugget in there. This, this here ought to free somebody. Stop expecting folk. To treat you the same way that you treated them. Stop expecting things from people. You got to let the Lord handle your situation. Because in life, people won't treat you the way you treated them. Am I making any sense? A lot of us put too much expectations on people. And that's the reason why you're down this morning, because you put too much emphasis on somebody. I want you to know that when they show you who they are the first time, stop giving them three, five chances. Know that they are who they are. God gives you wisdom to understand that when they don't treat you the way you treated them, you owe it to yourself to not get mad at them. But put that as a chapter in your life. Put that as a mental note in your mind. Somebody put a mental note in your life and say, I checked that. Because that just lets me know that I may not be able to go that way again. Here it is in the text. The Bible says that he says, Lord, we don't know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Notice when you look at this text. When you look at this text, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says that as he's praying and after he gets through praying, the Holy Spirit or the Spirit came upon a man by the name of Jehaziel. Let the church shout Jehaziel. Jehaziel. Now here's what's interesting about Jehaziel, and this is a lesson for all of us. Make sure that you've got a spiritual friend in your camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because see, 
some of us have some friends who say, who say nothing but nonsense. But if you're in trouble, you don't need nonsense. You need somebody who's going to speak a word from the Lord that can give you liberation. I already said something. Some of y'all ain't said amen yet. Stop allowing people who are not spiritual to feed your mind. I think somebody know what I'm talking about. The reason why you got the blues today is because of the deposits you've allowed to be made in your mind. If you're sick, you don't need nobody to tell you it's over. But it's the Lord's will. I, was, I don't need to hear that right now. I need you to tell me the Lord will make a way somehow. Don't tell me it's over. If you got marriage problems, you don't need somebody to say that's more fish in the sea. You need somebody to tell you how to take care of the fish already in the sea. If you're having church problems, you don't need to, you don't need to talk to a church hopper. Somebody who goes from church to church talking about just leave. That person is not stable. Preach, pastor, all by yourself. You got to know, brothers and sisters, you got to know that you got to stop listening to unspiritual advice. I, I'm not making this up. Jehaziel, full of the spirit, stands up and says something that I want to preach to us today. He says, the first thing I want to tell you, y'all calm down. I know the odds are stacked against you. But he says, listen right here. Listen, listen right here. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. Let me bless you. He says, if you listen, please, you'll understand something. He says to them, he said, let me, the first thing I want to tell you, he said, I want you to understand the spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he says, listen, all you people of Judah, verse 15, and Jerusalem, listen, king. Even the king needed to hear it. Which says to us that none of us are immune to hearing the word. I come in some Sunday. Some of us act like this sermon is for somebody else. Look at your name and say, top line. This, this ain't for them. This is for all of us. This, this is for the word. And, 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 and just because you ain't saying amen, not going to stop me from preaching. This word is for everybody. Including the pastor. He says, can you need to hear this word? Because you don't know what to do. And notice what he says. He says, the first thing I want you to know, don't be afraid of what you're going through. I don't know who I'm talking to. Whatever it is, you just heard it. You just heard it this week. Whatever you're dealing with, first of all, don't be afraid of it. Lee, I want you to hold somebody's hand and say, don't be afraid of it. I know the shock when you first heard, first heard it almost got you off balance. You may be a little off balance this morning, but I need you to tell them, don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. That's, that's, that's the word. That's the word for somebody. Don't be fearful. But then he also says something else. He says, don't be discouraged by it. Don't be dis discouraged by it. Let me tell y'all, saints, you know what the devil is? He's the author of discouragement. I think, so, I think I'm safe to say this. I know some of you have gone through discouragement. And maybe you're going through discouragement right now. I want you to know the Bible says don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. But then here's where I want to get to. This is why I want to bless you. He says, the reason why you ought not be afraid and the reason why you ought not be discouraged is because, first of all, this ain't your battle. Yeah, I need y'all to get this. this. I know you're in the fight, but this ain't your battle. I know you got the bad news, but it's not your battle. Y'all got to get this. Get this in your, in your spirit. And this is what the Lord helped me. The battle that you have raging in your mind, it's not yours. It's the Lord. I, some of y'all still ain't shouting back. Let me see if I can keep on talking. The, whatever you're going through, if you are a child of God, the battle is not yours. Oh, oh I hear y'all. Maybe y'all not saying amen because you're, you're saying, Pastor, 
teach me. Well, how do I know the battle is not mine? I hear y'all. I hear y'all. I hear y'all. Yeah, yeah, touch your neighbor and say, Pastor's now is going to explain how you know the battle is not yours. I, look at him again and say, hold on. Pa Pastor's now going to open it up to us and explain to us why the battle is not ours. Y'all ready to hear this? This is going to bless you. The moment we turn it over to God and tell God all about it and we leave it by faith, the battle is out of our hands. It's now the Lord's. Y'all didn't get it? I said, I said, until we turn it over, and leave it there. And when you turn it over and leave it there, you say, hold on. It's out of my hand now. I turned it over to God and now God says, I got it. He, 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 I'm not making none of this. He says, the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. I told y'all this earlier, saints. One of the things I, I see and understand that God has never needed me to win a battle. God has never needed me to intervene on his behalf. And listen, saints, I don't, we don't need to hold God's hand. We don't need, but God needs to hold our hand. And God needs to guide us to help us to understand that these battles that you're facing, even today, they are not yours. But let me tell y'all something. You got to turn it over to him. Let me tell you why this message blessed me. Too many times I've told God about some things, but I didn't turn it over to him. I complained about the things, but I didn't tell God, handle it for me. Y'all, 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 y'all acting like I'm not preaching now. How many of y'all know I'm telling the truth? I, 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 I've complained to my friends, and they can't help me. But the only time I really receive true help, I need somebody. I, I turned it over, and the Lord worked it out for me. He says this, here's your blessing. You got to turn it over to him. He says, he says the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. Now I got, I, I wanted to kind of close with this, but I'm going to let you know, saints, that the God we serve is the only undefeated in our lives. Never lost the battle. I'm going to help somebody. I said he, I'm, I'm seeing if I got the Bible or leaves it. I said he never lost a battle. Maybe somebody would get happy when I, he never lost a patient. Oh, y'all still ain't getting happy. He's never lost a case. Maybe that didn't help him. He, he's, a, he's a deliverer, a God of deliverance. I, he set us free. He, God is the only undefeated in our lives. And so when you look at this, my brothers and sisters, he shared with us, he has shared with us that the battle is not ours. And here's something I want you to understand. It's not by power. It's not by my might, but it's by the Lord's spirit that we win our battles. He never lost the battle, but then watch this. He says, sitting battles out means we have to stay in our place and hold our stance of faith. Here's something I want you to give saints that will bless you. He says, stand firm and hold your position. Right. Now, this is going to be difficult for some of us. It's going to be difficult because some of us are too mouthy. Yeah. Some of us can't help but open our mouths. Look at somebody said, he's preaching this morning. God wants, you, God wants us every now and then to shut up. Look at somebody said, every now and then, keep your mouth closed. Because if you talk too much, 
you're going to make a mess out of the thing that you're going through. Sometimes you just got to hold your position. Somebody shout, hold your position. Everything that requires you say something. And some of us going to have to learn this lesson like I've had to learn it. Sometimes your mouth is your own undoing. Your mouth, your mouth gets you in trouble. What you say, uh, what you say, uh, 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 it, it lengthens your trial. Because whatever comes from your mouth is either life or death. This may be difficult for some people if you're too mild. But it also may be difficult for the people who just always in the way. Who just got to fix it themselves. Who got to brag and say, I did it. Wish I had that. That's just, this is going to be difficult for some of us who are laden down with pride. Who don't want to admit that we have a problem. And if, you're, if you don't want to admit it, then keep coming to church front. But until you admit I come to church because I have problems. I, I, I have mouth. I have speech issues. I need the Lord to help me. That's why I need the word. Let me keep pressing this. This may be difficult for the person who's in the way. Here's the thing that I know. If you say you turn it over to God. And you know the battle is not yours. Why you always have your hand in it? Why are you still complaining about it now? But here's a better question. What battle are you facing right now? Here it is, saints, brothers and sisters. When you see the, when you see the text, the text says that we can stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. It says the battle is not ours, it's the Lord. So what should we do while God is fighting our battles? God says, I'm glad you asked because I'll, 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 I'll allow you to be a ringside seat. Have a ringside seat while I do my thing. Here's the thing that I want you to be blessed by, saints. That sitting battles out also means seeing the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. Yeah. Here it is, saints. We're saved by grace through faith. It's a gift of God, lest any man should boast. Yeah. Faith allows us to see the personal intervention of God on our behalf. Oh, my brothers and sisters, when I was preaching this message, I got to reminiscing over my life. And I told God, Lord, thank you for all the times you have rescued me. I told the Lord, Lord, I thank you for all of the times you got me out of some close calls, some things that I put myself in. I told the Lord, thank you, Lord, that you did not cut me off, but your mercy has extended to me. And I got to tell the Lord thank you can I just ask the question I'm almost done how many y'all know the Lord can do it for you how many y'all try God and you know the Lord can fix it for you how many of you know that if you just stand still the Lord will give you something to shout about something to give him praise about something to glorify him about on a Sunday morning you the God will give you that kind of news those of us who are saved saints and grateful understand that we're not saved because of our goodness. We're saved because God's been good to us. We're saved because God knew our faults, saw our faults. But the word of God says God commended his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for our sins. But then not only that, he says sitting battles out. Here it is, sitting battles out. And watching God works means we can anticipate the joy of tomorrow. Notice he says you will not need to fight in this battle. I thought it was interesting that he says you don't have to fight in it. Whatever you're dealing with, you don't have to fight in this battle. And I said to God, I said, God, I'm so used to interfering with you. And God says, now, now today, you don't have to fight in this battle here's a word for somebody in this room and I don't know who I'm talking to whatever you're going through today you don't need to fight it you don't need to fight this battle 
would suggest to us that some of us need to learn how to sit things out and watch God work. Look, I need somebody to shout, sit it out. Sit it out. God doesn't need your hands. Sit it out. Sit it out and believe that God is going to do exactly what he said he would do. I need somebody to shout, sit it out. Sit it out because when you sit it out, you're saying to God, I won't lift the hand, but I lift the hand to give you praise. I lift the hands and tell God, thank you for all that he's done for me because God is a mighty good God. Sit it out, saints. I've discovered in my own life, the Lord has shown me, Pastor Lacey, you don't have to fight anymore. Sit it out and watch God work on my behalf. I'm trying to tell you, you don't have to worry about what's going on in your life, what people are saying. Just sit it out. You got to understand, my brothers and sisters, that if you don't have medicine to heal yourself, sit it out and let the Lord do the healing. If you're in trouble in your life, you got to understand that whatever it is, you got to sit it out. I don't know what I'm talking to today, but I want to let you know that whatever happens in your life, no matter how discouraging it seems in life, you got to say, I put it in God's hands. I put it in God's hand because the Lord says, the Lord says to me, I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But I want to tell y'all, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. I'm just trying to tell somebody, sit this battle out. You ain't got to cuss nobody out. Touch your neighbor and say, you just sit it out. And then I want you to know that while you're sitting it out, you ought to have your hands lifted up. You ought to give God some praise because I want to tell you one last thing. This ain't in my text. It won't really, you won't really have victory until you learn how to sit it out, but also give God some praise. Oh, I want to tell somebody that when you give God some praise, the Lord can do some things on your behalf. I said when you offer God some praise, the Lord has a way of turning things around for you. When you offer God some praise. And when you say, God, I don't know how and I don't know when, but I want to lift my voice and give you praise. I wonder, is there anybody here who will help me give God some praise? I mean, when you think about all that God has done for you, somebody ought to tell God, thank you for being a mighty God. But then I want to tell you that the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord has delivered them from every one of them. Can I get one witness in here? Anybody in the room that say that I've been through some hard times. I've had some ups and downs. And I've had some hills to climb. But I wish I had somebody to stand up and say, after all I've been through, I still have joy. I still have a reason to praise him. I still have a reason to lift my voice. I can stand in the sanctuary and say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I never would have been here. Can I get one witness in here? Lean over and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, be not dismayed, whatever betimes you, because God will take care of you. Do I have one witness screaming another neighbor? Say, neighbor, let's fill this house with praise. Because if you praise God, the walls of Jericho will fall down. Can you say amen? And all you got to do is march around and tell God, thank you for one more day. Can you say amen? How many are thankful? That the Lord has granted you one more day. Can you say amen? Lean over and tell the neighbor. Say neighbor. I feel like praising God. Because you don't know. Like I know. What the Lord has done for me. Can you say amen? I've got a problem. I can't seem to solve. But I want God to work it out. Can you say amen? Lean over and tell somebody, 
I don't have any armor. I don't know what to do. But my eyes are on the Lord. Can you say amen? Touch one neighbor's a neighbor. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Ain't God all right? Keep your hands in the master's hand. Ain't God all right? Keep on getting up in the morning and telling God, thank you, God, for one more day. Yesterday was hard, but you woke me up this morning with brand new mercies. Touch one more neighbor and say, neighbor, thank God for the day. Ain't God all right? This day is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Is there anybody glad in 119? If you're glad this morning, help me lift him up. Ain't God all right? If you're happy and you know it, clap those hands. Let your neighbor know the reason why I clap my hands is because every time I lift my hand and pray, the Lord sour down blessings. Won't God do it? Can you shout yes? If you're waiting on a miracle, shout right now. Ain't God all right? If you have a battle that you can't solve, shout right now. When Jehoshaphat and the Israelites got to enemy territory, the same people that tried to kill them turned on themselves. Y'all ain't shouting her. I want you to let you know when you learn how to shout in the presence of your enemies, they'll turn on themselves. Ain't God all right? When you learn how to lift your hands in the sanctuary, something begins to happen. Ain't God all right? If you're ready for your victory, get your hands up and say, I got a feeling victory is on its way. I got a feeling, I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Can I get one witness? Say, all right. If you know it's all right, lean on me and tell somebody, all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. I feel it in my hands. Feel it in my feet. Got it in my mind. It will be all right. Sickness is going to be all right. Trouble is going to be all right. Somebody said, all right. All right. All right. Get this battle out. Let me help somebody. Sit it out by faith. It's not yours. The battle is not yours. Can y'all embrace what I'm saying? It's the Lord's. Once we turn it over and give it to him by faith, it's not in our hands. I didn't get a chance to preach. This is preach worthy. They, they marched out. Right, right, right. And God showed them how he'll fight a battle. And they didn't even have to lift their hands. But here's another thing. Until we start learning how to praise. Praise breaks strongholds. Man. 
Oh my God, I don't know. Praise sets the atmosphere for blessings. And I don't know about y'all, I need a blessing. But if I close my mouth, the rocks will have to cry for me. And I want y'all to know, I don't want no rocks crying out for me. Pastor, I owe God a praise with the fruit of my lips. I don't need you to shout for me. I've got personal reasons to shout on my own behalf. But then I also have personal problems that I need God to work out for me. First of all, the first thing I'll tell you, this is what I learned. The battle is not mine. I can't tell you how that freed me. I'm, I'm, intern, I'm internalizing things as you are too. And the Lord is saying, you see, you fretting over stuff that you should have turned over to me a long time ago. And you think your personal antics are going to solve the problem. It won't. Let me talk to everybody who got attitudes at church. You showing your attitude shows how immature you are. And it shows that you want the attention focused solely on you. Until we turn it over to God and take the focus out of ourselves, out of ourselves, then God can't get the victory. If you are the focus of it, if you are the focus of deliverance, then you can't say thank you. But it's when, hear what I'm saying? When the thing that you're going through is out of your hands. Somebody shout out of my hands. I can't do nothing about it. But my only resource is to turn it over to God and let him fight for me. I don't know who I'm talking to today. Holy Spirit, just all mine and me speak. You dealing with whatever you're dealing with is not your battle. You say, Pastor, it feels so per It's personal because I'm going through it. You're going through it. But it's not the trial. It's how I handle the trial. Sadness that some of us are feeling this morning is because you ain't let it go. You feeling disillusioned this morning. Sometimes when you're so down and out, you even question preaching and stuff like that. You can't even, you can't even spiritually get to this point. You say, you know, I just heard a liberating word. You will not need to fight in this battle. Hold your peace. I ain't get a chance to really talk. It said, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. The battle is not yours. I got, I got, y'all don't mind me, Minister. Deacon Sherrod, it's not your battle. Help your family. It's the Lord's. Now, if it's God's, then we know God to be a healer. <laughs> Somebody shout. I said, we know God to be a healer. We know God to be a deliverer. Anybody, anybody in this room going through something? Anybody in this room going through something? Anybody in this room going through something? Can you help me say the, the battle is not mine? I want you to mean it. The battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. And since it's the Lord's, take your ringside seat and just be a spectator and watch the Lord work. Y'all see how I'm sitting down? You ain't got to pick no fight. You ain't got to battle nobody. Just somebody take your seat and just watch the Lord work it out. He can work it out, saints. Heads about, eyes closed. You heard the word this morning. And perhaps you are in this room. And you don't know Christ Jesus on a personal level. When you came upon, when you came on this church, you were, you, you are saved. 
I mean, you're not saved. You are on uneasy. Uh, maybe at a point where you're not spiritually grown. And yet the Lord allowed you to come to this place. The, the, the blessings of tomorrow. He allowed you after a bad week to come here on Sunday. And the Lord is saying to you, just go ahead on and make a decision to follow me. And when you follow me, I'll bless you in ways that you that are unimaginable to you. But you got to trust me. You got to follow me. If you're not a Christian and you want to become a Christian this morning, could you raise your hand and say, Pastor, I'm not saved. I want to, be, want to become a Christian this morning. If that's you, you're not saved. You want to become a Christian. Doesn't matter who you are. If you're in the room and you're a backslider, that could be any one of us. Backslider just means somebody who turned their back on God. There's no armor for the back. Here's what the Bible is, this is what the Lord is saying to you. That you don't have to continue to live a backslidden life. Come to the church of restoration and be restored as if you never left. If you need, if you, if you need to come back to church, you need to rejoin the church, whatever it may be, raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. You're not in church. You, you left the church for whatever reason and you want to come back to church, raise your hand. Lastly, if you're here, and I know this may fit a whole lot of us, you are saved. You are saved, but you just don't have a church home. You're not sure about churches, so you feel that you can just be a member of your own church. Well, if it's right to be in church, it's wrong to be out of church. My prayer for you is that you would join a church, join St. Matthew in particular since you're here. If you need a church home, could you raise your hand? You want to unite with us? I see a hand. God bless. Brother Hunter. Doc, I thought you was already, already a member, but praise the Lord for your decision today. I thought, but listen, God bless you, man. That might be somebody else who's in this church who doesn't have a church. You, you go to church, you visit churches, but you don't have a church home. My prayer, I know you're prayerfully considering it. I want you to consider this church for the Bible base that we are. We are foundation. Our church is about Jesus Christ. That's the foundation which we lay our church to build our church. So if you're in this room and uh, you're not, you don't have a church home, you need a church home, why don't you raise your hand? You need a church. I know somebody's praying about it, but I want you to just say, Lord, I'm going to act in faith. And I'm going to make a decision. If that's you, raise your hand. You need a church. I need You need a church. You need a pastor. You need a place to worship. If that's you, raise your hand. I see your hand, sis. God bless you. I saw the Lord working on you. Sister Evans, she's right here next. God bless you. I don't want to take this time. Uh, I, don't want to, I don't want to go over this time because I see the Lord moving in the minds of people right here. That might be another person in this room who, who needs a church, who wants to become a m member of a church. In particular, you want to become a member of St. Matthew. If that's you, raise your hand. You, need to, you want to become a member of our church. Lord, I thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you've said. Thank you for adding to our church or touching those who need that needed that touch. Bless in Jesus' name. And for sake, I pray. Amen. Can the church say amen? Can y'all say amen if you receive the word this morning? All right, saints, we're now ready for tithes and offering. Can the church say amen? Tithes and offering, tithes and offering. If you are a visitor for the first time, there are many ways if you have the uh, many ways that you can give if you don't know anything about our church uh, you can give online uh, you can go to stmatthewbc.org that's our church website you can go give through cash app uh, St. Matthew BC you can give through Giveify just look for St. Matthew Missionary Baptist Church 119 Fidelity 
You can give through a credit card or you can give uh, uh, with an envelope this morning. If you need an envelope, could you raise your hand? If you need an envelope, could you raise your hand? I want to say to all the visitors as well, if you are a visitor, and uh, we're grateful. I see my cousin here and her husband. It's good to see the Donovan family. So grateful to see y'all. Pastor Cheryl Donovan, it's so good to see y'all. Bless y'all. Made me happy seeing y'all come through the door. Blessing. Listen, saints, if you're here, if you need an envelope, just raise your hand. Raise your hand and, and just, just, just feel free to give because the Lord blesses a cheerful giver. You know, in this year, we're talking about aiming high, uh, uh, more in 24, uh, uh, giving. I'm going to be preaching some sermons about giving, but I want you to know that your blessings are tied to your giving. And my prayer is that all of us would learn how to give and not have a spirit that stings you. So my prayer is that you would consider this. The church is good ground. And I want to thank God for everyone who continues to support and give to St. Matthew. You are a blessing to the body of Christ. Wanted you to know that. Amen. All right, saints. Uh, does everyone have an envelope? Somebody said no. Nope. That means if you, if you don't need an envelope, raise your hand. You need an envelope. All right. Let me pray over the, over the offering. Our ushers are in place. Lord, I thank you for the offering we're about to receive. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would bless us with your power, your presence. Allow God uh, uh, the bounty to fall fresh from heaven. Open up a window from heaven and pour us out blessings we have no room to receive. Your word says, give and it shall be given to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. That's your word to us. So bless us according to your word. We anticipate it. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, the, the ushers are coming. They're going to play a little jubilee music. I know Jesus. Jesus, Jesus can work it up. I said, Jesus. I know Jesus. I said, Jesus. 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 Just one minute. Just one minute. I forgot to announce that the men would be having a fellowship this Friday. This Friday, Pastor Lee. This Friday. That would be a men's fellowship at 6 o'clock this Friday. I'm praying that all the men can come out and show support. We'll be here at the church. We'll be at the church, and that's this Friday. All men, even the visitors, even the men who are visiting the church, you are welcome to participate with us on this Friday at 6 o'clock. All right, morning. Mm, well, that problem that I had, I just couldn't seem to solve. I tried and I tried, just got deeper involved. So I turned it over to Jesus, and I stopped worrying about him. I gave it over to the Lord. He worked it out. I know Jesus, if you let him. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I say, Jesus, if you let him, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, well, that pain that will not move, as I prayed in the upper room, that burden that I bore, I had me one much more, so I gave it over to Jesus, I gave it over to Jesus, I gave it over to Jesus, I ain't ready. Work, work, work. 
has everyone had the chance to give? Everyone had the chance to give? Let's go to God in prayer. Turn on Father, Lord, we come right now, first of all, just saying thank you. Thank you, God, for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this precious gift of giving, Father God. Thank you for those that gave, those that desired to give but did not have it, Father God. Use these gifts to glorify your church and your name. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Uh, we, we can stand. Saints, we're ready to leave. God bless you again. Don't forget we have Bible study. Don't forget that we have an engagement at 2.30. We are looking forward to you. Thank you, Grim. Thank you, Papa Baby. We're looking forward to uh, you coming out and su supporting us and uh, being a blessing. Again, we want to thank you all for coming to church today. Uh, grateful that you came this way. Let me pray for you. The battle is not ours. It's the Lord's. All right, let's the church say amen. We have Ryan Hunter who's uniting with us. Let the church say amen. And then let's thank God for Sister Camille Sarilus. She's now a member of our church. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen for the Lord adding to our church. My prayer is that you would invite somebody next week to be a part of our worship. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, kindness, and mercy. You told us today that the battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. You also told us you will not need to fight in this battle, but you told us to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which you will show us. And then you told us to go out tomorrow and face them, Lord. Thank you for the joy of tomorrow. I pray blessings upon every person in this room. I know all of us are struggling. All of us are going through some type of battle. I pray for strength this morning. Teach us how to fight the good fight of faith your way and not our way. Put the weapons down. Close our mouths and use our mouth as a weapon of praise our hands as a weapon of praise because you deserve it now now may the grace of God the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore can the church of God say amen God bless you you're now dismissed